we come to worship praying for the strength to be a witness for Christ. Blessed Jesus, you teach us to cling to Scripture as you speak psalms from the cross. You paint an image of mercy as you tend to your mother's grief. You ask us to recognize the frailties of our enemies and to give and to seek forgiveness, for they know not what they do. You amaze us as you commend your own spirit, embracing God's peacefully. Holy Spirit, show us the blessings in the cloud of sacrifice that we may sing to you and proclaim your holy name. May we hear again your story with fresh ears as we come to worship you. Tonight, we'll engage with scripture by using the technique of examine. 
The examine is a prayerful reflection on a question, a scripture, the events of the day in order for us to detect God's presence and even to discern his direction for us. It's an ancient practice in the church that can help us see God's hand at work in our experience. And so this evening, we will have examine and respond to a series of questions prompted by Christ's journey to and on the cross. When the examine is posed, reflect upon it in a time of silence, and the chime of the bell will end each time. The first examine is posed for us all to acknowledge our sinfulness, and so hear these words from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 3, verses 21 through 24. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. How have I sinned and broken relationship with those I am called to love, both God and neighbor? O crucified Jesus, Son of the Father, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, eternal Word of God. We worship you. O crucified Jesus, holy temple of God, dwelling place of the Most High, gate of heaven, burning flame of love. O crucified Jesus, sanctuary of justice and love, full of kindness, source of all faithfulness. O crucified Jesus, ruler of every heart, in you are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In you dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. Jesus, Lamb of God. Jesus, bearer of our sins. Jesus, redeemer of the world. Amen.
The Passion Story, Matthew 27, verses 15 through 31. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand, and he knelt, knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe, put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Who or what has caused you great hurt and pain? Who do you need to forgive?
Isaiah chapter 53. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom all others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the inequity of all of us. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before it shares is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light, and he shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous and shall bear their inequities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out himself to death and he was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Think of those silenced over the eons. Whose voices do we need to hear today?
Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, not to condemn the world. Christ prayed for us and for our salvation, asking that we be forgiven even as we were in the act of crucifying him. Therefore, with him, let us intercede on behalf of those in this world. Let us pray. Creator God, you made covenant with your people and made good on your promises. Even though it meant coming to us as one of us in frail human flesh, subject to the same varieties of sin as are we all, yet you did not give in to sin's rule. Instead, you met it with grace and unconditional love, bringing justice for all of creation in Jesus Christ our Lord. As your church, we too often stand off in the distance, averting our eyes to the suffering of your world, focused on our own pain rather than looking upon that of others. We run away, we hide. Strengthen us, Lord, to turn our eyes to you, where still you hang on the cross of human sin. Unite your church and rouse us to holy indignation that we may confront evil with your compassion and be your body reaching our arms around to the world with love. With you, almighty Saviour, we pray. For creation, groaning under the weight of sin, our sin that devastates and destroys May we instead keep it until it, being mindful of all living creatures for future generations to enjoy. For those who are in positions of authority over others, in this nation at national, state and local levels, Lord, grant them your wisdom and the courage to govern in accordance with your holy rule. For those who are suffering in mind and body from a whole variety of things, Lord, comfort them like a mother soothes a hurting child and heal them as they rest in your everlasting love. For those who mourn the loss of those that they hold near and dear, grant them resurrection hope and communion with the saints for those who have gone on before us. For those who cannot trust you, who struggle with the free gift you extend. May your gospel of peace draw them home unto faith with you. And for those who have come to know you, who believe, Lord, help their unbelief. Open their eyes to your presence with them so that they can trust that when they pass through the waters, they will not be overwhelmed, but instead be washed in your eternal love. Gather up all these prayers and many more, our intercessor and advocate, and further those that are in accord with your holy will. And when they are answered in ways beyond our comprehension, keep us tethered to you in our disappointment and dismay. May we continue in prayer for all those who cannot pray and for those who have no one praying for them. And for the things we forget or do not utter, May the Spirit within reveal our deepest needs to you. These things we ask in Jesus' name, praying as he taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew 27, 32 through 37. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink. 
drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. When they sat down there and kept a watch over him, over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Who is the Lord of your life? What habits in your life let others know this? Luke chapter 23, verses 32 through 43. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that they called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers, soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Reflect upon a time you felt close to God. Why then, as opposed to other times?
Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. What relationships in your life need healing and reconciliation? Matthew 27, 45 through 50. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And then about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sakbathani? That is, my God, My God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. And at once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait! Let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. When did you or have you felt most distant? and forsaken by God.
Luke chapter 23, verses 44 through 49. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Reflect upon your own funeral. Who is there? Who is absent? Are the words spoken conveying how you would want to be remembered?
Let us pray together. Loving God, you sent Jesus Christ to save us. We have betrayed him. We have denied him. We have abandoned, mocked, and crucified him. Have mercy, O God. Have mercy on us, that we may rise from the shadows to glorious life on Easter morning through Jesus Christ, our only hope. Amen.